Well, it's been a long time since I've done any filming. It's uh, middle of August and it's hot and it's dry out. So around here, we don't do a ton of wheeling in the summer because uh, the woods get really crispy dry. So everyone's working on projects. And of course I've been neglecting my projects for months now, as we all know. The head gasket still has not been done on the Pathmaker, but that's not what this is about. Today, we're gonna get back into the cheap finder. And of course, because I'm an idiot, I was thinking about this earlier and I didn't come outside. And now it's two o'clock and it's like 30 degrees outside. I don't know what that is in freedom units. Figure it out. Uh, it's hot. And uh, the plan is today is to uh, pull the rear end out of this thing and weld it up. Because I keep seeing people ask about lockers for these WD-21 Nissan Pathfinders. And uh, there's not that many options. And quite frankly, if you have a welder, it's just way better anyway. This one's a limited slip, which is not as easy to weld. An open diff is way easier to uh, really nicely weld. It's a little bit difficult, but uh, we're gonna pull it apart and see about welding it up. You know how things go around here though. This thing's gonna fight me coming apart. But let's uh, pull the tires off this thing, pull the axles out and get that diff out of here. Oh, and of course, good Captain Idiot here who's gonna eat the grass under the truck while I'm working on it. Hey, pause. <laughs> You're a hot mess. Go get the jack and the jack stands and the impact gun. Well, if you've never pulled a rear diff before, these are the bolts. <laughs> but the bad news is that the axle shafts stick into the spider gears. You can't just unbolt those bolts. Nothing will happen because the axle shafts hold it in. You have to unbolt the axle shafts as well. Slide them out. You also got to take off the drive shaft bolts and I don't know, probably a bunch of other shit that I'm forgetting about right now. But let's uh, get this thing in the air. Also, I should note my luxurious cardboard here because uh, we're doing this on the cheap because this is the cheap finder after all. Not doing it in the shop, we're doing it in the gravel. Anyways, cardboard is your friend when doing stupid shit like this. Got the axle in the air. Pulled the drain plug out. It's leaking uh, gear oil in my driveway. Unfortunately, that was really clean looking oil, which is a bad sign. I take it to be. But now I'm just popping the uh, oh, last of the axle bolts of the back side of the axle here. And uh, if we're lucky, we are lucky. But the other problem is this is a sign that someone's been in here recently. But uh, whoop, let's spill some gear oil over here just to uh, make a mess in my driveway. Well, not in the driveway yet. I'm hoping to pull this axle out without uh, unhooking the brake lines because I'm lazy. I only have to come out about an inch, inch and a half, and uh, then the center section will be able to come out. Now, if you read the instruction manuals, they say to unbolt this, they say to take your brake lines off, they say to use a puller, they say to use a whole bunch of shit, but I'm awfully lazy. So, like I said, we're just gonna uh, do it the greasy way, make it work here. Why did I pull that again? God damn it. <laughs> Next on my list, drive shaft bolts. Uh, I got one left in holding it, and I got this piece of wire. The piece of wire is there for a very important reason that you'll find out the hard way if you ever pull a Nissan drive shaft out. That's a slip yoke. So if you pull it out, it's going to take a little while, like 30 seconds. And then all of your tranny fluid is going to come pouring out of there onto the ground. Be hanging the drive shaft off of the rear cross member so it doesn't slide out. Or bad times will ensue. So anyways, now that I uh, also undid that, not really sure what it is, don't even care. Four more bolts to go. Haven't smashed my fingers yet. Shouldn't have said that. I really shouldn't have said that. Well, axle shafts are slid out. You're sitting on the uh, oil seals right now. So that's super high quality. Drive shafts off. Where's my hammer? Oh, 
I just felt a bunch of re uh, rust fall down the back of my shirt. Oh. Peanut gallery says ew. Okay, well, I gotta put the stupid camera down because you guys aren't helping. Okay, well, it required a whole bunch of time with this thing. And a bunch of time with this thing. But, uh, I got a crack. It's a pain in the ass. They always are. But just a couple last little price here. And we'll pop this heavy bastard off here. Get to welding. So, uh, as long as you got the axle shafts, shafts out, it will come off. But it is going to require a whole bunch of beading tapers and uh, wedges in the flange before you can get it to crack. It's always a pain. Just put down your purse. Hit it hard. Winner, winner. So we got this thing out. This is a uh, Nissan H233B solid axle. Rear axle with a limited slip. And now through the magics of brake clean. We will spray all this shite off of here. If you don't know of the brake clean, let me tell you, you are missing out. It is the uh, world's most amazing shum cleaner. Also great for your hands. Probably toxic as hell. But, uh, oh man, nothing takes uh, gear oil out of grease. Quite like brake clean. Well, we're on camp free now, but uh, looking awfully good. God, I love freaking. It's looking awfully clean. Oh, 35 to 8. So uh, we could do some math. I believe that's 438s. Should be. Because this is an LST rear end limited slip which is the super common on the uh, H233Bs, uh, Nissan Pathfinder rear ends. You'll find way more common, you'll find the uh, limited slip ones than you will find the open diff ones, which in some ways kind of sucks because it's a lot easier to weld an open diff one, but uh, because there's a whole bunch of little magical fairies going on inside here. Clutch plate, clutch pack sorry, uh, on either side here, and uh, in theory, they get tight and lock up the rear, but in practice, they don't. So, what we're going to do is cut a piece of plate that goes inside of here, and we're going to make the uh, poor man's spool. And now where most people go wrong when they do this sort of thing is they just stick the whip in there, they just dance around a bunch and try to hold these spider gears from spinning. But, as we know, I like to drive like an idiot. So, what I've learned on this thing, so the secret is you find some scabby steel from your scrap bin and you cut a piece and you drop it in there. And if you cut it nice, you can wedge it nice and tight against the spider gears. And then you got something to weld to all the way around, times four, and then you essentially turn this thing into a spool. Now, am I ever gonna unbolt it? No. Is it screwed? Oh yes. But that's not what we're worried about here. We are wanting to go wheeling on the super, super cheap. So, poor man's locker. Also, it's officially beer 30 in the shop. It means I'm taking longer than I was supposed to. <laughs> also, Fun times, when I was laying underneath that thing, key not in the ignition, heard the fuel pump kick on twice. So I've unhooked the battery now. Probably why the battery keeps dying. Stupid car. Oh man, am I happy with that piece. The magical measurement. That's a piece of 3 8 flat bar. And I cut it one and a quarter by a half inch. And it fits. The 3 8 fits absolutely nice and tight in there. So that uh, can't even spin the spiders right now. That is exactly what we want. There's the spider gears. So because I got that block in there that's such nice and tight, it'll allow me to uh, burn in pretty easily without uh, spanning a huge gap and give me something nice and beefy. I'll be able to crank my welder all the way up. So 
I'm gonna cut three more of those, smash them in there nice and tight, and then we'll fire up the sparkle machine. Stoked, it's gonna be good. Yeah, here's these poorly cut little things that I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, in theory, Jesus Christ. Need to tap it down a little bit, but uh, that's the move. Well, got my snazzy jacket on because the weather is cranked up to 10. And uh, don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, eh? But we're gonna try to blast some welds in there. Do I know what I'm doing? No. Two more, and then we're just gonna start burning. Did I say? This carrier is now wrecked. So, don't do this if you care about your LSD. There's no going back. Your gears are fine. But, uh, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices. It's ugly, real ugly. See, so I got four tacks because that's where the four teeth from the spider gears hit. So now I'm just gonna run welds all the way around the outside and uh, burn it home. I do have some spatter spray. I'm gonna put it on the ring gear because uh, I don't wanna get too much spatter on the ring gear. It's not my prettiest piece of work, but uh, that old slag girl never moving anywhere ever so we'll just do that three more times we got one more side to go but uh she was making sizzling sounds and smoking a bit which means we're burning off the grease it's getting a little hot i can see random shit's dripping out of there so stand here and i'll blow on it for a bit and then burn in side number four. Call her good. It's not that pretty. But hey, I was never here to win beauty contests. I was here to do some wheeling. But it still spins nicely all the way around. And uh, it's welded all the way around. That's never coming apart. Well, there it is, folks. I'm not going to bother you, bore you with. Uh, me putting it all back together because the installation is the reverse of removal. So uh, toss the center section back in, the 12 bolts on it, slide the axles back in on either side and uh, bolt everything back up. It's not a huge deal. Got to let this thing cool down now anyways because I got it uh, roasting hot. That right there is uh, the easiest and cheapest way to uh, have a welded or locked differential in a Nissan Pathfinder. Another great project for uh, Project Cheap Finder 2.0. We put the 34 inch tires on for zero dollars. Well, we bought the tires for 500 bucks, but zero dollars to cut the fenders, throw them on. And today, the only cost was a bit of welding wire, a bit of welding gas, three cans of brake clean, and a little bit of time. And this thing is welded up. If you're uh, thinking about spending the $800,000, $900,000 on a Nissan Pathfinder locker, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Quite frankly, you can buy yourself a welder and a bottle in the same for less money than it's going to cost you to uh, buy a locker and weld it yourself. And then you end up with a welder at the end. Like I said, I'm going to throw this back in. And on my next project, I'm uh, going to do a steering brace on the front of that thing because with those 34 inch tires, we should put a brace on the uh, steering arm. So stay tuned. That's going to be my next project. And uh, stroke. Let's get this thing back out in the woods real soon. Cheers.